Hi, this is Mark News from Plant Talk Radio. Thanks for subscribing and listening to our podcast, Your Gardening Questions from Plant Talk Radio. To help keep this podcast free, we're partnering with Stoke Seeds. Pre-plan your indoor seed starting program with the help of Stoke's 2017 Gardening Guide and their online articles. Whether you're adding texture through foliage, choosing a new variety for a splash of color, developing an existing garden, or starting from scratch, Stoke Seeds has some great catalog and online resources to help you through the process. Enjoy gardening tips and gardening trend forecasting from their garden writers and favorite chef. More than just a listing of vegetable and flower seeds, the Stoke Seeds website is a complete resource center with valuable information on seed starting, planting, harvesting, plus all the gardening accessories you need to make your garden the envy of the neighborhood. Get growing with Stokes. We'll have more to come from Stoke Seeds in the next few weeks. For now, today's gardening question. How do you... Prune a plant to get it to go in the direction you want it to go. Well, Mark, there, there is a long four-hour answer to that, but let's go to the facts. Let's separate out pine as being different. And then I will simply say that all plants can be directed in their growth by pruning techniques. Now, let's come back to this particular plant, which is a bristlecone pine. It's a normal well, normal shaped conical tree uh, loves, again, the hot, dry areas. Don't put it in a low spot along the fence line or whatever. If you have, however, a mound or a high, dry area, the bristlecone pine will grow fine here. It's not the most popular plant, and they are so darn slow in growth that uh, they run a little expensive because of the time it takes to make one, so to speak. But let's deal with the espalier factor. And then call it simply directional pruning. Now, on a pine, when we think of uh, sheared Christmas trees, we think of, uh, well, conical plants uh, that the pine can be made into because that isn't necessarily their, their normal shape. The espalier or directional pruning happens to be approximately an early June project. The evergreen... Well, all evergreens are not the same, and the pine stands out as being very different in how it grows. It sends out from the tip end of a stem, sends out what's called a candle in the spring or very, very early summer, uh, usually growing upright or, if it's on the side of a plant, growing somewhat horizontally. Now, you can let it grow to its natural length. It will stop elongating and set a terminal bud or the bud for next year's growth. However, people that grow Christmas trees and nurserymen and then people that want to fool around and have some fun with a plant called an espalier will trim that pine prior to its extension to the normal length that it would put out. So let's just say that if my bristlecone pine was to grow 10 inches long each year on its own, I would probably cut it uh, and I'm going to say simply early June depends on the season a little bit, how it's growing or how, how, how it's going and growing. I will cut that stem before the terminal bud sets so that I, length, I, I reduce the length of the growth down to two inches or four inches or or even sometimes I will snap off a stem going Not the wrong direction, but a direction I don't want it to go in. So I I get in there either with my thumbnail or a pair of pruners and snap off that particular stem so that I'm stopping the growth in length. It will, of course, be sheared off or cut off at that point, and then it will stop. And over the period of the next number of weeks, it will set a terminal bud where I have caused it to stop. Instead of growing out 10 inches, I maybe keep it at 2 or 3 or back to 0. Uh, and that's what I have done on my plant. The espalier in this case is, as I said, 8 high, 8 wide. It's only about 12 or 14. Well, it's barely 14 inches out from the wall. Because anything that grows out perpendicular to the wall, I absolutely stop it. Uh, sometimes I cut off whole old stems. Sometimes I cut off just new new growth, much like I was saying. Instead of letting it grow out 8 or 10 inches from the wall, I stop it so it only grows 1 to 2 inches out from the wall. I don't want a fat plant <laughs> to emulate the owner. I want, a, I want a plant that's growing against the wall. So I will tolerate and encourage even the growth sideways and upright. 
and then I will stop the growth in length by pruning. Now, that's on a pine. If I were to try to prune a spruce or a taxus or a juniper, I would handle it somewhat differently. They can be sheared at a different time. They are, are, are completely different. They will... Uh, well, when they when they grow, they they have side buds on the stem, whereas a pine does not. It sends out this creature called a candle, and there are no side buds until it comes to its terminal extension or length. Or I have made it stop at that length. Whereas a spruce, a taxus, a juniper will have side shoots, so I can prune them almost any time back to a side shoot that is pointed the direction I want new growth to go in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it Now, we start the four-hour part back to more technical stuff at this point. But you can make a plant grow the direction you want it to grow. Uh, I don't recommend this for indoor plants unless you're going to make a bonsai. But uh, it's a technique in pruning, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, someday you'll have something that people will gawk at. They'll ask you how to spell it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hey, thanks again for listening to the podcast. Remember, you can pre-plan your indoor seed starting program with the help of Stokes Gardening Guide and their online articles. For the best selection of vegetable, flower, and herb seeds available, go to stokesseeds.com. Cultivating successful growers for generations. Circle270media.com.